Hi, welcome again. Today we are going to talk about RVT Cash. If you're familiar with my RVT and Heightfield Mesh videos, you might have heard of this term. So let me show you where this is going to use. So basically, if you're using virtual Heightfield Mesh, so everything you see on the ground and these rocks is coming from the RVT Cache. And here you are looking at RVT Blender rock. On this rock, so we have some sort of sand on the rock. The sand on the rock is coming from the RVT cache, not the actual material on the ground. Then if you are going to check the shader complexity of your normal landscape, so you can go to optimization V mode and shader complexity, it will looks like something red. Of course, you can optimize that. So red doesn't mean bad. So it means there are some complexity in the shader code, but we can use the RVT cache like this and it will simply remove that complexity. So we are basically using cache version of that material. Having this green doesn't make your app more performance. So there are more factors related to the performance of a game. So I have a separate video on that in the description below about try count and the shader complexity. Have a look at that. So now we know where the RVT cache is gonna use. So let's see more. Right now I'm using open land as my landscape material. So here with OpenLand, we have a one-click RVT solution. So basically you get a widget like this, then I can click this button and it will add all the RVT configuration for you. And there are some things you need to configure for the RVT cache, especially with the camera depth. This tool is gonna take care of this for you as well, but still it's really important to know what's going inside so then you can customize and fit. So now we have the RVT set up so we can continue. Then let's get rid of grass so we can clearly see the flow. So in my landscape material, I can search for grass and there's a option called enable grass. I can set that to zero and there won't be any grass. So we can easily see things here and there. Okay. And then let's get a little more lighting as well. So yeah, like this. And then uh, from your material instance, search for RVT, right? Then you get some option like this. In here, we have something called RVT cache. Just click that. Right, then you will see some different look in your rock and the material. Sometimes it's noticeable, sometimes it's not. That's happened due to a lot of factors. One of the things is the quality of the texture. So here you see, we are using the compressed uh, version of texture. So it might look different from the original. In this rock, we can see that. But if you think about something like sand, uh, we uh, barely notice a thing. Then if you're using virtual height field mesh, the height field mesh itself will use RVT cache by default. But for the ground, it's optional to use RVT cache, but it's quite better to use RVT cache because now you have the same material in both height field mesh and the landscape. RVT cache has something to do with the camera depth or the pixel depth in an Unreal Engine. With landscape materials, we use camera depth or pixel depth to change material based on the distance. For example, if you're looking at close, you get something like this. And if you go further, you get a different scale version of the textures. Then you won't see the repetition of the textures. But with RVT enable and when you use the RVT cache, we don't get that camera depth functionality. So then we need to fake that. How we fake that using mip maps of the RVT texture itself. So usually we need to change that configuration based on the uh, size of your landscape. But if you're using the one click RVT tool that I mentioned here, that value is automatically configured for you. It's usually good enough for you to work with without any configuration, but still uh, you might need to chain uh, for your different taste. Right, uh, let me show you how to chain that. First, let's go to the RVT cache mode so we can preview this change. Okay, let's put two and 24. So these are the default values. All right, now we, we get a view like this. Have a look at this rock and let's put a value like 1000 and you can see the change. So these uh, small rocks are gonna scale too much and also this texture like this. Basically, you can scale this to get more distance from the camera and like that. Here we have the depth power as well. So we, with depth power, we freeze the, uh, the gap between the largest and the smallest value. For example, everything below one will get smaller. Everything higher than one gets bigger and bigger. So basically, if you're not satisfied with the look that you are getting from the these default values, try to change them. So start with two and 24, just change from there. So next thing is to understand what is actually RVT cache. So let's get into the material and let's try to figure out what it is. So here we have the material instance and let's scroll down. So now we have the master material. Double click on that. 
So you get the open LAN master material like this. So basically what's happening here is here we have something called runtime virtual text output. So basically when you are do some calculation on the material, it will save a copy of that into this virtual text output and it will write to the virtual texture, right? Then uh, this is where the RBT cache functionality exists. So I can go inside. What's happening here is if we enable RBT cache, so basically it will sample that cache so it will get value from that cache not from the uh, original material and we use that cache version as the actual material content that's where the performance benefit lies so basically we are reading from something already written not evaluating the material on each and every frame all right that's cool so now if you took out the problems so one of the common problem with rbt cache you might see some flickering especially when you have a large landscape that flickering is quite prominent so usually if you play the game sometimes it doesn't appear if that's the case that's just fine but if still there then you might need to change the resolution of your rbt texture so here's how to do that from your world outliner and search for rvt volume and there's a volume related to rvt materials select that in the details panel we have the virtual texture so then let me double click over here so then i get rvt material over there here we have a size section this is the default configuration comes with open land 10 and 4. so you can change these values you can basically reduce this value to get rid of that flickering or blurness so let's go somewhere over here all right let's put a value like 8 still fine so let's put some value like 2 so now you can see now everything is blurred out and that's you can see the problem here. So you need to find a value that's good in the quality as well as working for your or target graphic memory. Alright that's it for today. I hope this will help you to understand a little bit more about RBT cache and do some modification if you really need. Alright see you soon with something interesting. Bye.